Hello. A very warm welcome. It's tough to see people now. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm Kiran, uh, Business Development Manager for Rack Systems and Edge Computing. I handle the international business, which is APJ, Middle East Africa, South America, and the CIS. Um, I've been with the company for the past 15 years, so a quick background. Uh, today we're going to discuss on Snyder Electric Innovation and Containment Solutions and Micro Data Centers. So this is going to be a soft launch. This product is going to be available uh, probably in Q4 this year, or uh, deliveries will happen in the Q1 of next year. So a quick, quick heads up, and this is a very focused group where we are trying to share this. Uh, we need your feedback and comments on this. So quickly to jump the gun, uh, we are going to see the way the IT is going to get deployed is changing and it's rapidly changing. You saw the speakers already discussing about that. Earlier you had all the racks rolled into data centers which are empty, and then we had your equipments mounted inside. Today, because of the converged infrastructure or hyper-converged infrastructure, you see this rack and stack arrangement going up, wherein you have all of the racks pre-populated, pre-tested, pre-configured, and then rolled into the data centers. So it's a, it's a major change which is going to happen. From few research institutes, uh, we got to know a good data point. In 2016, worldwide, globally, uh, we saw 10% of uh, the rack unit volumes moving into rack and stack arrangement. I'm surprised to see that in the next couple of years, this particular percentage is going to double or triple. It's going to go more than 50 to 60%. It's huge. So it's coming through. The way we are going to deploy IT is actually changing. So this particular solution or architecture is going to support our customers and partners to meet this ongoing demand and it'll help them deploy the IT with an increased speed, which is also going to be extremely flexible and cost optimized. What else do you need? So quickly, let's look at our agenda for today. What are our customers saying us? What are they asking us as Night Electric when they're coming about containment as a solutions? Then what is this hyperpod? What is a micro data center and a key takeaways for today? So we have been discussing with all of you uh, right from the morning. We have a demo set up outside there. And we had very nice discussions with a couple of uh, key customers, which we are in extra large data centers, colos, and a mix of partners and other ones. Let us try and consolidate what are the customers actually asking us or telling us about the trends which are actually going on in a data center or what challenges do they face in a day-to-day -day life. Data center life are dynamic, okay? You don't have a static mode where you have something pushed into a data center and doesn't change, okay? You are aware that there's IT refresh which happens between 18 to 36 months, which is also impacting the way they are actually between continuing the data center business today. So what are their key uh, concerns when they are talking about any containment solutions? They wanted to know, is there a faster way to scale their IT capacity, scalability, that becomes key. Second, they are also asking us, is there a better way to actually entice their tenancy or increase their occupancy rate? Then they're going to talk about, is there a much more cleaner and a cost-effective way to deploy IT? The third one is about flexibility, because the existing traditional design, they are, they are very much realizing that it's not flexible enough with the growing trends of converged infrastructures which is what I'm going to talk about the fifth point, where you have a fully loaded rack, which are about to roll into a data center and you have an existing containment, which is a cold or a hot. It's very tough for us to actually put in and take roll in and roll out the racks easily. So these are a couple of challenges which we were able to uh, summarize here. Let's see more on how this traditional containment solutions have been impacting or have been put into place. So the traditional uh, containment designs have not been designed with flexibility in mind. Every containment so that it, so, uh, solutions, whether it is hot or cold, is going to be sitting on a rack. So the building block for any containment solutions is the rack. So if you have to take out an existing rack, because there are upcoming projects, the customers keep changing, they want to scale, they want to grow, you cannot do it with the traditional containment solutions. Anytime you might have realized that the racks are already in place, and then the containment is actually built. So there's a construction work which goes on whenever we're talking about cold or hot oil containment. So you need to do cutting, drilling, mounting them on the top. So additions 
or removing and making some changes is pretty difficult. So you can see a couple of, couple of them doing some construction work on the top. If you want to change or move or add something, it's pretty tough. Something like this. So if you have a cable raceway coming on the top, you have to do everything on day one on the top. If you wanted to actually add something, it's going to be pretty difficult once the IT is rolling inside. So adding some ceiling structures like this is costly and time consuming. Of course, you're, you're seeing the second scenario there where the cabling is running from the bottom. You're, you're seeing that it getting minimized, but it's not really going away. I've, I've talked to a couple of guys where the cabling is still running from the bottom. So when you have these sort of cabling running in the false flooring, definitely they pose an ob obstruction in the airflow management. The third one is the construction. So a lot of customers, internal and external, will actually say that it's, sec it's not secure to have any construction work done on site after your IT is in. So if your equipment is running, up and running, they don't want anyone to go around. So physical security also becomes a tough task. So these are a few challenges which we see in the traditional design. Let's look at how the existing trend of convergence is impacting them. So the traditional containment doesn't contemplate fully integrated IT racks. What does it mean? If you have a fully integrated, fully loaded IT rack, which is a rack where you have your compute, network storage, everything built into it, properly integrated, wired, tested, ready to move in into a customer place. Imagine in an existing containment solution where your rack is a building block and you have the containment sitting on the top of it. What happens? It's pretty difficult. You cannot take any rack or you cannot add this rack. And if your internal customers or your external customers will not even allow to do anything which is actually up and running. So that becomes a building block. So once you have these sort of racks, which is definitely growing today, and that's what we talk about the trend, which is 10% last year is going to grow to 50 to 60% in next couple of years. Say by 2019, it's going to grow by 50 to 60%. It's huge jump. So what if, if you're with the traditional design or traditional way of doing your containment system, you're out. So you have to move into a system which actually is flexible enough and helps you deploy your racks faster and it's independent. So there are two options. With the traditional design, you definitely know you cannot. Either you stick to a standardized model where you say whatever gets into this data center, we will not accept any change. So if it is a 42 height, 45 U height, 48 U height, that's where it stands, and whatever racks are rolled in with the containment in place, no changes done on that. Or you move to a solution which is called a freestanding frame, which is independent by itself, and it's not dependent on rack. Okay, now here, to solve all these customer challenges and the upcoming trends, we are probably to introduce our product called Hyperpod. Here I'll pause for a minute and ask for the video, please. There's an increasing trend of IT being deployed rack by rack rather than server by server, scaling at the largest increment possible. Internet giants are deploying simplified, cost-optimized data centers, and high-efficiency operation has become standard practice. Financial customers are quickly adopting new open compute style architectures and changing the data center landscape. The Patriot project addresses these trends and delivers up to 20% lower total installed cost and it's 30% faster to design, deploy, and upgrade. We have leveraged our work performed for internet giants in China and used this experience to develop a highly customizable pod framework that can support various applications Co-location businesses can preserve cash by rolling out pods as needed. Our pod solutions support new OCP and converged architectures. The pods are constructed of materials that do not require field cutting or drilling and are assembled with simple or no tools. Deploying pod infrastructure is more like an assembly project and less like a construction project. Pods are not partial to any specific power distribution method or cooling technology and integrate to all methods equally well. Racks are able to roll into and out of rows. Fully converged racks can be connected, powered up, and running in a matter of minutes versus hours. The frame itself provides out-of-the-box support for open compute style architectures and is dual purpose to support the deployment of one megawatt EcoBlade solutions. 
Plug and play, software management, and physical security options complete the offer. Pod level designs facilitate deploying at scale. These solutions dramatically reduce the amount of physical data center construction, allowing pods to be deployed in parallel with IT. We have future-proofed data center physical infrastructure for larger deployments. Designed for co-location, internet giant friendly, these solutions make data center deployments more cost-effective, faster, and easier. Thank you. So that's hyperforward. So it's going to change the way we have been deploying IT. And you can rethink on the way we have been planning our IT architectures or infrastructures in total. So to keep it simple, it's going to change the way the data center will look like. Okay? You can have the freestanding pod ready for the racks to come in any point in time, and it will allow you that flexibility to move in and move out any point in time. Second, we are trying to move in with a traditional containment system of cold and, and hot air system. You can have all your raceways, your uh, ducts, everything running on the top. That's what you can see in the video as well. Thirdly, you're not doing any construction activity on site, which is definitely risky. We are moving from a construction to an assembly model. Just to give you a closer picture, this is how it looks like. So you can actually adopt any sort of rack any design, any make, any model. So there is no limitation of going with 42 or 45 standard all across. So you can actually choose to put in any sort of a rack. What, what is needed is to align the aisle in, in the tallest rack possible. So if you imagine you're getting a 42 height rack, that's the max you're trying to accommodate. You can align the beam to 42 or 52, whatever you wanted. Rest all cabinets can actually roll in. We have some accessories which can be taken care of here. You can see this it can actually maintain that containment system in, in place. So it is a hot air or coat air containment. Of course, the pods are expandable. Depending on your need, we can have two, three, four pods running, depending on the aisle row and length. So it's extremely flexible, not only today, but for your data center life. Second, the speed of deployment. Because you have all your power, cooling, every architecture running on the top of the pod, so dependency of drilling something on the ceiling or doing something on the floor is actually taken care of. So it's pretty easy for you to actually move in. So you can see the RPP arrangement here on the pod. So that the distribution from the walls is actually moving closer to the racks. The whips actually are much more smaller. At it is much more easy for troubleshooting and other activity. You can see a duct. This is for your cooling. So we can have a cylindrical duct or a square duct, depending on your needs and requirements. Third. Definitely moving from a construction sort of a work to an assembly. It's, there is no drilling or there is no cutting. There is no ex surprises on, on site for this sort of a model. It's all pre-designed, pre-configured. It's in place before your racks are in. So that's hyperport. So to give you a quick glance on, on uh, what is the key difference between a hyperport versus a traditional design, our Science Center team has actually picked up a an architecture which we work with a customer to work out a pilot on this. This is a 1.3 megawatt project. We had nine pods, 24 racks in each pod, roughly around six kilowatt per rack, two and then multiple like that. So that's how the layout looks like. This is a shocking result. So by analysis, we know that hyperpod is going to be 16% more cost effective on the CapEx itself. In detail, this is a breakup. I'm running on the time, short on the time. So the traditional design. There are a lot of components which are inbuilt into the traditional design versus a hyperport. That's where the cost saving comes in place because this is heavily dependent on the frame. So you see the red bit there, that's on the frame. The second biggest advantage is on the deployment time. It makes it pretty easy. I was checking with our people last night. The pod arrived very late, and we were able to bring it up and running within no time. So ideally, if you look at it, you're able to save 21% deployment time, it might be large in terms of your complexity of a data center increases day in, day, day in and day out. So ideally, we can share all of these are trade-off tools. The total of cost of ownership can also be shared uh, by customer. So we have some trade-off tools available on our website, which we are going to do it after this product is actually launched. So the key takeaway for us 
is it's great. It has a great flexibility. It increases the speed of deployment, reduces the deployment time, and reduces a lot of cost. So roll in, roll out casters quickly, independent of uh, the racks. You can have any model make a brand of racks to be rolled in anytime. So there's no limitation or dependency on that. And definitely saves 16% on the CapEx and 21% on the deployment time. Now let me uh, quickly look at Micro Data Center Express. This is also a soft launch, which is going to come up in the later half of the year. So uh, I saw a lot of speakers speaking about this stuff in, in the morning. So that's the piece which you're talking about, a micro data center uh, versus a regional data center. When you go to a centralized data center, you see a lot of best practices, like biometric, man trap, security guards, locking, redundancy, and monitoring. But whenever you look at a branch office or a remote office or a network closet, this is how it looks like. For some reason, this is the reality. So what are we trying to do here is you have a lot of unsecured racks, no power, poor cabling, no monitoring, lack of dedicated cooling. So we are trying to bring all these challenges together and standardize using a micro data center model. So when we talked to the customer, they were asking us for some requirements. So they wanted to increase the consistency, reliability, and ease of regulatory compliances. And they also wanted to reduce unique training requirements, troubleshooting time, on-site works, and human error. So the answer is this. This is called micro data center or pre-configured, configured to order pods. So we have been the champion in this business. This is called ISX in the past. So we have something called configure to order wherein you can decide what you want and you can pick and, pe uh, pick and actually assemble the pieces together. So that's the ISX piece. There is something which is based on the best practice or the industry's best practice or the segment's best practice. We are picking up the required, the must-haves, and put it into a single rack. Okay, so that's called the micro data center. To sum it up, when you're talking about a micro data center, it's, there's no rocket science. Micro data center is nothing but compute, storage, network, backed up by user physical infrastructure, which is power, cooling, rack, software services built into it. And that's how it looks like. Okay? So what are we going to uh, bring into the table is something which is ready, ready to use, which is similar to the Converge infrastructure, but without your compute network and storage. So we'll have all the physical infrastructure ready into these racks. You can see this gear. It'll have some white space available for you to actually mount your IT equipment. It'll have power and the required cooling bundled into it and some monitoring mechanisms. And it's going to be uh, a shop uh, stocked in our warehouses and the disties, so it can be easily available within three weeks of time. So what, what are we uh, doing here is that we are working with multiple IT vendors and partners. There are, these products are actually certified and it, it has a speed of deployment. They're definitely having a compatibility. Any 19-inch model, any 19-inch model of servers, network storage, it is compatible. We have something called fit like a glove guarantee. So any EIA compliant equipment can actually fit into this. So that's 100% guarantee on that. So it's secured and definitely manageable. To give you a quick snapshot on our partners here, so we have some solutions or key architectures or reference architectures readily available with Cisco, HP, which you have already seen there, Dell, definitely also, Nutanix, and few other uh, IT players in the market where we are closely working with them on these architectures. So the early adopters for micro data centers are from the enterprise IT, you can see retail, healthcare, finance. There are two sort of deployments for this. One is the traditional IoT, and there's something on the IIoT piece of it also. So today what we are launching is something very dedicated to the IoT. IIoT, we have a product called Smart Bunker FX, which we are going to launch it in the later stage. Okay. All right, to sum it up, monitor the edge, standardize the edge, secure the edge using Micro Data Center Express for the edge from Snyder Electric. Thank you very much.